Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I came up with this image. Now this image has benefited from a fair amount of pre-visualization. That is, um, I'd thought of the image before I even started taking any photographs. Every aspect of this image, from the composition to the lighting, has been engineered to make it look the way it does. OK, so let me show you what I've got set up so far. So on this table here, uh, I have uh, the subject, which are these flowers, and I've got them clamped to this uh, retort stand uh, because it will give me a lot more control over uh, exactly how these are positioned. If you have them in a vase, uh, it's much more difficult to get an exact position, whereas this way the whole thing is fairly sturdy. OK, also on the table at the moment, uh, I have uh, this piece of uh, picture frame glass. Uh, now that will come in useful uh, a little bit later and I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do with that then. A bit further forward I have my tripod. Uh, this is a Manfrotto uh, 475B um, which has a, a geared centre column which allows you to position the height of the camera relative to the subject um, very accurately. On the top of that, I have this geared head. This is, a, again, a Manfrotto uh, 410 uh, geared head, which uh, gives you, again, great control over exactly how you place the camera. OK, on the front of the camera, I have this 24-70 uh, to 70 zoom lens. Uh, and on the top of the camera here, I have this uh, Profoto uh, flash trigger, which also allows me to control the energy in the flashes. The camera is tethered into Capture One software. OK, so the first thing to do would be just to take a test image, uh, just to see what is happening with the house lights in terms of contaminating the image. Uh, so with no flashes at all, I'll just take an image and we'll see what we get. OK, and you can see there that you're getting the uh, beginnings of an image. But there again, uh, the settings that I'm using at the moment are uh, 250th of a second for the shutter speed, which is the flash sync speed for that camera. Um, I've got an ISO of 100, but I've got the aperture set to 2.8. Uh, now, it's very unlikely that I'll be using 2.8, uh, so I'm going to move this uh, down to uh, about f8 go and we'll just repeat that test. There. And with those settings the image has disappeared uh, completely. OK. So in the final image that you saw at the beginning of the video, um, the flowers were partly obscured by water droplets on a pane of glass. Uh, so that is what I'm going to set up next. Here we are, so I have this um, doughty C stand. Um, I tend to use these uh, stands quite a lot because they are um, very heavy and uh, very robust uh, and very stable. Um, so what I'm going to do here is just set this so it's just in front of the flowers uh, and then using these uh, clips I'm just going to clip the glass to the stand. You do need to be quite careful doing this uh, and make sure that the clips that you're using are robust enough to hold the glass. OK, that seems to be in place. Now I'm going to try and position this so that the glass is just in front of the flowers. So it's actually uh, so close it's almost touching. So it just takes a little time to get it in position. There, I think that's about right. I'll just have a look through the viewfinder and see what that looks like. OK, that's all right, I think. So the next thing to do would be to set up a light. OK, so here we are. This is a, a Profoto B1X Studio Flash. Uh, and uh, this is 500 joules uh, and uh, I'm using it in this position so that uh, I can partly backlight the subject. Uh, 
Uh, in this way, it will um, saturate the colours in the uh, petals and the leaves uh, and give me uh, the result that I'm looking for. Uh, now, I've purposely not put any modifier on this. Um, I don't think, uh, for this particular subject, I'll need any. Uh, I think the idea of having uh, a fairly um, harsh light uh, will work well um, with the rest of the uh, composition. But we'll see how we go. OK, so I'll just turn the flash trigger on and we'll go for a test image. OK, there we go. Uh, that's uh, not a bad result as a, uh, a first try. Uh, I think it possibly needs a little more energy. Um, I might just wind up the, uh, the flash uh, by one stop. So we'll just add one stop of energy to that flash. Give that another go. There we are, that's a bit brighter. Now the other thing that you can see here uh, is obviously my hand. So to cut down the amount of uh, reflection that I'm getting in the uh, glass here, what I'm going to try and do is cut down the amount of light which is spilling out of here and going all over the camera. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to use um, this zoom reflector. Uh, so this will just concentrate the light onto the flowers. So we'll just pop that on the front here. That. Make sure it's all lined up and take another test. OK, now that has changed the look of this uh, considerably. Um, one, it's made it um, a lot brighter, uh, probably too much, actually. Uh, but also, we've started to bring out all the dust which has accumulated uh, on the glass. So when you're shooting through uh, a piece of glass like this, um, it doesn't matter how much you clean it, there will always be uh, dust on the surface. Uh, and with a light at this sort of angle, you will always illuminate that dust. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually flag off um, part of the glass um, just with a piece of card so that the light from here can't hit the glass. So, in order to do that, what I have here is a lab stand again, uh, and a piece of card, and a clamp. So, I want this piece of card to end up probably about here somewhere. So, in order to do that, what I'm going to do is just clamp it to the top of this lab stand. This. I'll just pop that in position. I'll just see if I can actually see that in the viewfinder. No, I think that's just about out of position. OK, so we'll just give that a try. There we go. Now, straight away, quite a lot of that uh, dust that was in the previous image. I'll just go to the previous one. So we've got all this up here, for instance. Uh, all that has now disappeared. So that's probably good enough and the rest can be taken out um, when uh, we do the post-production. Now as things are at the moment, we still have um, some reflections uh, in the glass here. Uh, so we're still getting uh, quite a lot of uh, light leakage um, from the light onto the camera. So, in order to stop that, what I'm going to do is use another piece of card uh, and just place a flag in here, just about there somewhere. OK. So now we'll just take that again. There we are. All of those reflections have now disappeared. So this is what we were trying to get rid of. Uh, this is this, the bits of camera and so on. Uh, and that is now all gone. OK, so the next stage in the evolution of this image uh, would be to apply uh, some water to the front of this glass. Uh, so to do that, what I'm going to do is just use this spray bottle. Uh, this is just plain water. Uh, and what I'm going to do is hold it quite a long distance away uh, and just gently spray onto the glass. There we go, and we'll just give that a test. 
Excellent, that's starting to get there. I think for the result that I actually want though, I'm going to need a bigger depth of field because the water droplets themselves are actually out of focus and the flower is in focus. So what I'm going to do is change the um, aperture from f8 to f16. Now the image overall I think was a little bright anyway um, so I'm only actually going to add one extra stop um, although I've actually changed the aperture by two stops. So I'll just add one extra stop of energy to that. Give that another go. There we are, that's starting to get there. Let me just have a little look around the image and just check where our focus point is. I think it could do to be adjusted. So let me just set that up in the viewfinder here. Okay. Let's try that. Yes, that's starting to get there. I think we need a little more uh, water. So let me just add a bit more water. Yes, that's starting to give me the result I want. Uh, this uh, at the back here uh, is a little bright for me, so what I'm going to do is just try and carefully flag that off, uh, just using a, another piece of card. I'm just going to hold that in position. Uh, now, in order to make sure I put it in the right place, I'm actually just going to turn the modelling light on on the, uh, on the flash head. So, just watching what I'm doing with the modelling light. I'll just place that about there. There we are, that's taken it down, possibly a bit too much. So let's just try that a little further back. The further uh, away from the, um, the flowers, the lesser effect it will have. So somewhere around there. That's looking okay, that's the sort of thing I'm looking for. And I think the exposure there um, is actually quite good. That's more or less what I want. Okay, so part of the way that I'm creating this image uh, is being in control of all the aspects. And one of the things that I want to do is just um, make the part of the glass here where the, uh, the flower is uh, a little more transparent. Now there's two ways to do that. One would be to add some more water, which is what I'm going to do first. And secondly, would be to actually take the glass out of the picture completely. Uh, and then combine the two images in Photoshop. So we'll go with the spray first and see how that goes. So I'm just going to add some more water just in that area. Yeah, that's starting to look quite good. I'll add a bit more. Excellent. So that has given me a couple of variations there. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is carefully just remove the glass, like so, and just take another image. There we are. So this could form part of the image when all the various aspects of this have been combined in Photoshop. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So here we are in Photoshop and these are the three variants that I've decided to um, go through with. Uh, so this is the first of them and we have this one with a bit more water on it and then finally we have this one uh, which is the one where I removed the glass. All right so the first thing that I'm going to do is just make a stack of all these images. Um, the easiest way I find to do that is just to go to file come down to scripts, down to load files into stack, add open files and just click on OK. There we are, then Photoshop will go through and make uh, each one of those uh, separate 
images into a different layer. Uh, so I can go through these uh, and just go down to the bottom one, which is uh, this uh, one without any of the glass in the way. Um, now, actually, what I'm going to do is just reorder these a little because it will make it easier for the edit. So I'm just going to pick up the, uh, the one that's right at the bottom and put it right at the top. OK, so with this in place, what I'm going to use this one for, if I just turn that off for a second, you can see that at the top here, we're still getting a very small amount of contamination um, from, the, uh, from the flash on the glass itself, which is reducing the, the contrast in this general area. Uh, so what I'm going to do is turn that back on again, and I'm just going to add a, a layer mask to that, like so. Uh, and now I'm just going to paint away all the bits that uh, are on here um, that I don't want. So in order to do that, I just need to make sure that the foreground color is black, uh, as my mask is white, uh, and then just with a brush, um, actually I'll make that brush a bit bigger, so just right click the mouse and move that up to about here somewhere, that's about right. I'll leave the hardness where it is so it's very soft, and I'll just paint through. And that will then re reveal the uh, lower images. Okay. There, like that. It's just a nice, quick, easy way to uh, mask out all the other bits that I don't want. Now, I've actually gone a little too far, um, so I'm just going to reverse the uh, foreground and background uh, colours. So I'm now on white. Uh, so I'll just get rid of those bits at the very top there, like that. And I think I caught some down the side as well. So. OK, so with that complete, um, I can move down to the next image, which is this one here. So if I turn that on and off, you can see the two um, variants that I'm looking at here. And what I'm going to do is actually combine both of them. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to change the blending mode for this particular image to the one underneath it. Uh, so where it says normal here, just click on the down arrow uh, and we'll just come down and have a look and see which one works best. Darker colour is quite nice. Uh, lighter colour is actually quite nice as well. Uh, pin light I really like. So I think I'm going to go with pin light. So just click on that. Yes, that's starting to get there, I think. Uh, now, there's still a few little bits uh, in the corners, and the stem I think I'm going to get rid of completely. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go up to the top layer here, and I'm actually going to add another layer completely like that. Uh, and then just with black selected and a reasonably large brush, I will just brush in and just paint out the stem and any other little bits which need addressing. There we go. So with that bit done, just remains to select a crop. Now I usually use 16 by 9 because it fits the video very well, but that's really the only reason that I use that uh, particular ratio. Um, but you can use uh, anything uh, you wish, really. Uh, I'm just going to centre the image up a little. Something like this. Maybe make it a little bigger. There. Yeah, I think I'll go for that. Uh, now, I'm not too bothered about this bit down the side here because I can always just literally paint that in. So I'll just click on OK. Now, still with my layer on the top here um, and black selected, just pick a paintbrush and we'll just paint that bit across the side here like that.
There we go. So that's my um, piece of abstract um, flower art, if you like. Uh, and I think um, the result has been uh, very good. It matches uh, the idea I had in my head, um, which is the way that I like to uh, create this type of image. Okay. Well, I hope you liked uh, seeing how I did that. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.